Okay, welcome back to On the Workbench. Today what we're doing is we're going to take your ordinary Porter Cable 14 inch bandsaw, and the same would apply to many other bandsaws, and add a nice convenient work light so you can be able to look at your subject while you're cutting and be able to have an extra light in your shop. And so the way I've got this wired here, you can have the light on or off, bandsaw can be on, light can be off, light can be on, saw can be off. And we're going to show you how to do this today on today's episode of On the Workbench. So stick with us and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so the part number for this installation here we're looking for, uh, this is a uh, order from uh, DeWalt Porter Cables uh, Service uh, Net website. Uh, they have a lamp assembly. This is uh, part number 5140073-56. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what comes in this assembly. And so as we see, to take it out here, it comes nicely packaged. And then we've got the flexible gooseneck here. We've got the medium base fixture here. We've got a switch on top. We've got three wires here, two for the lamp, and we've got a ground wire. And then we also have this nice housing here. This slides back to reveal the gooseneck. And then we've got a bolt that we can use where we can bolt this on to our fixture here and there's a flange here and there's the bolt so we'll use that to be able to affix this to our bandsaw and be able to wire this in. One thing here that's a little bit disappointing is that the wires to the light are both black, neither one of them uh, came colored otherwise and so we'll have to measure to see uh, how large this hole needs to be. I'll probably drill it undersized and see if we can then, uh, then just gradually work it out a little bit larger here so we can fit this through. Um, and work it backwards from there. Uh, this was about $30 to buy, but I think the return on this is going to be uh, quite a bit more than that since my bandsaw, I love it, it's a great bandsaw, but it just needs a light on it. I don't know why it didn't come with a light. Uh, the Porter Cable Drill Press came with a light. Uh, many other products have a light on it, such as the Bench Grinder, but for some reason they did not put a light on uh, this. So to begin, one of the things we're going to have to do is we've got, well first of all, this is obvious, but make sure it's unplugged. You do not want to be messing with the electrical system on your bandsaw if it's plugged in. Make sure it's unplugged. Don't take any chances. Don't be stupid, folks. And the second thing is my bandsaw is set up for 110. Uh, the light fixture here is set for 110 volts. Uh, and this bandsaw is capable of being, re of being rewired for 220 volts. Uh, if you've done that, I made a 220 volt bandsaw. Uh, I would warn you that this, what I'm about to do is probably not going to apply to you. Uh, may void your warranty, blah, blah, blah. It certainly voids your warranty without any doubt, but you may have exploding, headlight, uh, exploding lights unless you get a bulb rated for 220 volts. So we can remove this access panel here to get access to our electrical system. This is on the front side of the bandsaw. Same side as the switch assembly. This is where I intend to mount the, band, the uh, light. And so with that off, I take just a little bit of plane width to get this panel accessible. Just trying to see if we could avoid Nope, we're not going to be able to avoid that. We're going to have to sneak the screw out from here, from inside the blade guard for the bandsaw. And if we just turn that around, that should drop that flange, that extra safety flange there out of the way. And with that out, now you can see we have access to all the goodies uh, in our wiring here. So we can see where the switch goes on and off. We've got the two sides of the switch. It's easy to see from you look inside here. The colors of the wire and you can see the wires on the that's coming in on the hot side, which is what I'm going to want to splice into so that I can have my lamp on whether or not the saw is on or not. I want those to be independent. 
Uh, I had to previously rewire my bench grinder to make it accessible um, so you could have the light on independent of uh, the grinding wheels running. And so I want to do the same thing on this. And then I want to uh, set this up here so the light goes uh, through here on this access panel here. That should be easy to drill out. And there's already a ground that's already set up up here. So that's convenient for the grounding wire on the light. We'll just uh, make use of that same ground as well. Uh, as I, and there's another ground down here for the uh, same thing. So we'll just take advantage of that common ground. We'll have to put in our splice connectors and work it from there. For the drilling task here, I selected a 1530 second inch drill bit. And one thing here to pay attention to in the back is you see we got the connector here where that bolt holds down this panel. We're going to want to make sure that the what it taps into back here, there's a little uh, strut there. We want to make sure we avoid that. And so that we got all this clear space up here that we can work with here. So we'll go just right above it up here and we'll drill our 15 30 seconds inch hole uh, up there. So make sure you're wearing your safety glasses when you're doing this and make sure you work carefully. To ensure that I've got the best work service possible, I'm going to go ahead and just put this back in. And in fact, I'm going to place just that screw back up there because I know where I'm going now and I want to make sure I can drill this in as square and cleanly as possible. I place that in. I've got my drill. This is metal here, so make sure you got your uh, safety glasses on. And I'm going to go ahead and see if I can drill my hole right about here. Okay, we've got our hole. At this point, you may want to use a file or a rasp to do a deburr the edges of it. I've got a nice round file here. And there's just a little bit there, so I'm going to get out my flat file. And that cleans that up rather nicely to get rid of the deburring. And we're going to double check the fit on this to see how this works. Remember with the power off. And it looks like 15 30 seconds was the perfect size. I'm a happy guy right now. So now we're going to go ahead and pull this off. You may want to wipe away some of the metal shavings from the drill. And then now on the back of the lamp, we've got the bolt. We can go ahead and remove the bolt, just like this. And we're going to feed the wires through it. In this case here, you'll see that there's a the couple of the ends here that still have, from being stripped at the factory, still have their ends on it. I'm just going to go ahead and remove those because they've got to come off sooner or later. Give that a nice little twist there to hold all the braids together. Watch out for the plastic shrouding. Now we're going to slide this plate off here just like we had before. Then you may want to knock off some of the metal shavings. And we're going to feed the wires through the hole just like this. Get that seated and then we're going to take the bolt back through the wires on the other side. You 
You may need to check the other side for any, any burrs that need to be removed. And with that in place, we can go ahead and tighten up this. Let's go and give you another view so you can see right now. Now we've got the lamp fixture here uh, going through like that. Let me see if I turn around the saw to where my camera is, and then you can watch how the rest of this goes down. Now we've got the wires here for the lamp, and we've got a ground wire here. So it doesn't matter which ground that we use, we'll just take that close convenient ground that was being used otherwise. And we'll add this wire to that ground. I'm going to put a crescent wrench on the back side of this. And then we'll use a crescent wrench to tighten this down. And this is keyed over here, covered with the shroud, so if I nick this with the pliers. There we go. That's much tighter. You may also want to spray that uh, with some sort of uh, liquid locking agent, but that looks like that's fine for now. And now the next challenge is we've got to get these two wires that actually have the power here connected down to the hot side of the switch and the wires that come from down there. So we're probably gonna have, we're probably gonna probably gonna have to add in a splice to be able to make that reach all the way down to the hot wires that are coming in out of the wall on the top side of the switch. For accomplishing the task of splicing this in, I've got a couple of these specialty uh, wire splicers here that so we'll just put this across and saddle. On the main wire here, you see there's two access ports on this side here, uh, only one there. So we'll put our splice wire here, we'll go on top, and then we'll have the wire that we're splicing into, we'll go all the way through this here. We'll tighten down and squeeze this metal connector all the way through here, that'll bite into uh, each of the wires. And so then we'll be able to run a new wire out of here, and out of the other one here, and run that into uh, some wire nuts. And then, then we'll use the wire nuts to tie into the wires in the light and we'll seal everything up with some electrical tape. Again, make sure the power is out. If you don't feel comfortable doing this because of the, electri the electricity, uh, I would advise you not to or find the advice of someone who you feel is competent to be able to help you out with this task.